Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night even, depending wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another episode here on Unite Hair TV, Unite TV, whatever subject, whatever social network you'll be watching it on. So today's subject is one that we feel is very important to us hairdressers. Um, it's called Haircutting 101. What is that? What is that to you, Haircutting 101? Well, to me, it's going to be technique based, obviously, on using those little things that we call shears, scissors, etc. But also, instead of being technique heavy, we want to sort of break it down into when we start the haircut on a client. What does that entail? And suitability is going to be one that's going to be massively important. How do we attack that consultation for a haircut with a client? Maybe want something that either you're not sure of, they're not sure of, which is very, very important. Or maybe all the whole, all parts together are not sure of how we, how we achieve that. So I want to go through some questions. I'm not going to go too heavy on consultation because as a little reminder, on August the 2nd, we are doing the art of consultation right here, which is going to be a great one for those that feel they lack any confidence in bringing the client over to them, the stylist, and believing in them because that client has to believe in them. I've always said no woman likes to have what I call a white knuckle ride when they're in a salon where they're grabbing the chair and you can see the knuckles on their hands turning white as they're thinking, oh my God, I don't know what they're going to do to me. I hope it's going to be okay, especially for like new clients. Those experienced stylists out there, they breeze through these situations. When you're a new stylist, you're always wondering, how do they achieve that? How do they get there? Is it going to take me 10, 15 years to get there as well? And I want to just give you a few little tips and tricks today that hopefully will add to your repertoire as a stylist and improve how you work behind the chair and then gain you more clients, which is the most important thing. So let's talk about suitability when working on a client. And we're gonna call this young lady Deborah today, I think. So we've got Deborah's in the chair. She's coming to me. And one of those first questions she might say is, Oh, Gary, you know, I really want something different, but I don't want anything off the length. I don't want anything off the layers, but I really want something different. So you're left scratching your head thinking, I've got, this is a soap, because this is in comb. It's not Harry Potter's wand. I can't magic something up out of this. How do I change it? So it goes back to the questions. My first one is always going to be in the opening gambit. Okay, talk to me about your hair. What do you feel about it at this moment in time? Even if they're a longstanding client, doesn't matter. Just talk to me how you feel about your hair right now. And also you could throw in, what are we going to do moving forward? Do you have a vision for your hair? What's it going to look like in six months? Because you're always going to have women, maybe like Deborah right here, who says, I'm growing it out. I just want to grow it. Great. But what's it going to look like when it's grown out? What are you growing it to? How are we going to get there? What's your hair type like? Massively important. Maybe she wants something that's like really voluminous, you know, really, really beautiful, like long, really feminine hair. But she's got really thick hair. You know there's curl in there, but she doesn't like layers. How do you introduce it into her? So there can be a subtle way of showing you how to do layers, what we call seamless, and showing you a layering technique that you actually don't see the layers in the hair. They all just blend in effortlessly. And that's something you can come and download here on Unite TV, there's a great video for that for what called Long Layers, I thoroughly recommend it. So we wanna talk about techniques of hair cutting, how they're gonna help the client because no client's gonna come into you rarely and say, I want graduation, I want over direction. They're not gonna explain it in terms of that. And when they say texture, do they mean that we are gonna pick the hair up and then we're gonna point cut it like crazy to create texture, or are they just talking about the finish of the hair and how it moves? And it may be just like a soft wave that you see so that's so predominant nowadays. So that wouldn't necessarily be influenced by the haircut, it's more about the finish. So our finish becomes really, really important as in that consultation of when we finish that. I've got a couple of mannequin heads lined up here today to show you some hair cutting techniques. I've got one here on mid length hair. I've got some shorter hair and I've got a bob. So we're gonna look at precision. We're gonna look at point cutting, texturizing, 
and a few other little snippets in here that I find, think you will find very, very useful. Once again, questions, I encourage them all the time. If you're sitting at home, no one's gonna know who you are. You can ask any question you like. Specifically, if you're something that you struggle with, or you think there's something that you really don't like to go near when you've got a client in the chair and she's become that, oh my God, client, what am I gonna do with that? So let's talk about scissors and comb, just to start off with this is to say it's hair cutting 101. Have you got a comb that sits in your hand really, really well and you can manipulate it really well? Okay, very, very important that is. Color of comb can be something important. If you have something you have a lot of male clients and you're cutting hair with a pink comb, is that off-putting to them? Do you see some? Because you know what men are like, they can be a bit funny, a bit, mach mach um, a bit macho, Maybe it's sometimes it's good to separate your kit and have like, you know, your male cutting tools and your female tools purely because I just know from experience, some are just funny. I always used to have all my men's stuff with scissor over comb, et cetera, it was all black or gray. And I would change my personality almost as well when I was talking to them. Very, very important. Another side of hairdressing would become multi-personalities and uh, therapists for all their clients. Um, any questions that are gonna come through? Um, I'm going to have them relate to me from my fantastic crew that you can't see that are off screen. They're all going to cheer. They're jumping up and down. They're wild with excitement on a Monday because I, as Mondays, I like to call them hangover days for hairdressers. Is that they're hungover from the weekend and they're not going back to work until the Tuesday. Traditionally, that's how it used to work. Have we got any yet, Mike? Or, yeah, Stacey just reminded people that uh, the chat box is where to put your uh, questions. Yes, put them in the chat box, people. So if I'm dealing with mid-length hair, that's how we're gonna, we're gonna do our first one. So we wanna go into that in a second. Let's talk about suitability and how I'm gonna approach that. We might find we have hair that just always wants to just fall down in front of the face like this. So how do we eradicate that? You know, Debbie's growing her hair out, we need to put shape into it. So I come back into that consultation. She talks to me about her hair. What does she feel about it? She says, I'm growing it out. That's all I get out of her. So I need to expand on that a little bit more. Growing it out into what? As we said before, what's it going to look like? And how do you do your hair at home? That's the most important thing. It's not, I can do a great hair salon. How is she going to replicate it? So once again, breaking down that Okay, you want to see texture, but do you want to see texture in the haircut? Do you want to see texture in the finish? That relates to products that we are going to use on them at a later date, because she may be the client says, I don't like using product. Well, great, but as we all know as hairdressers, we love products, we use it every day. We can't live without it. And I come from a generation where we only had three products in the salon, it was hairspray, setting lotion, and hair gel. A mousse came along later. So now this, with this plethora of products, I'm living in dreamland. But could you imagine a world where it's all taken away and all you've got is hairspray? No, you would freak out. So it's really important that we address that as well in our hair cutting, et cetera, and that we can explain that to a client of what I like to think of my three things, the three key things, especially for hair cutting, is what, why, and how. I will ask those in my head. What I'm doing, how I'm going to do it, and why I'm doing it. So obviously, argument sake with Debbie, she's growing her hair out, but we wanna create balance in her layers. So that's what I'm doing. How am I gonna do it? I'm gonna do that with a sectioning I'm gonna take working on a head from parietal ridge. And how am I gonna do that? So that's how is, oh, I'm just gonna use scissors and comb. Well, there we go, we break it down. What is a hair type like? Debbie's, because she's had a heavily textured haircut in the past, we come into it, and this will be in my consultation, I can put my scissors down. We can look at her and we can explain to her because she says, oh, my hair's frizzing a lot. Well, you've had your hair cut so much, Debbie, in past point cut, that we can see through there, there's no weight on that to hold the hair down. The weight of the hair is predominantly two thirds of the way through. That has got the weight to lay the hair down. This is gonna create a frizzy looking texture on the outsides of the hair. So in her own mind, frizzy, that's texture to us, to her, maybe to some people, she has too much. So I'd be looking at that and I would be explaining, I'm gonna point blunt cut this, not point cut it, 
So it creates a blunt cut weight to it. When it lays down, it have more weight and will sit better for her. You've also got the option of telling her that if this hat does this naturally to her hair, you know that hair that's just as it gets longer, it strings out. Blunt cutting is by far more preferable to a hair than point cutting because we know within three, four, five weeks, the hair is going to have this state again. It's going to almost look like it's been point cut again. So we're using just common sense to improve how that hair is going to look further down the line. We'll talk to a little bit about combs, scissors. You know, what scissors are you using and how do you use them? So new hairdressers, I always talk to them about this more than experienced hairdressers, it's really important that we just quickly go over that, the method for cutting hair. And if you're at home, if you've got some scissors and you really struggle with this, because we're going to do a bit of scissor, bit of scissor over combing, is that technique, hand position as well. There's different hand positions. Okay, people cut hair, but, you know, finger on top, finger by the side. But the most important thing is we see through here is just literally is your thumb is the only one doing the work. Okay, and you can see through here, I haven't even put my thumb all the way through the scissor. I find I have more control sometimes by just resting my thumb on there. And that keeps my tension even and correct all the way through, which is great for when I change it over and I want to do it fast, the scissor over comb. And you can see it's just my thumb is moving. I'm not using both parts of my hand because what that creates is irregularities of where the blades meet. And you will find in comparison to that, you don't create balance. I'm just gonna move myself out of the way so you can see through here. So there is our action, okay? That's what you wanna see yourself doing. Practice that as much as you can. There is also another one where you can place your thumb underneath. So it comes in the underneath of the scissor and you can cut baselines like that. But that's something to be worked on, but it's very important to be feel comfortable. And we're going to talk about wrist positions and elbow positions as well for our cutting. We've got a question there, Mike. Yeah. Uh, what shears are you using? I'm using Unite shears, of course. These are a 5.5. These are what I would call our, they're not just like entry level, they're a great mid-priced scissor. Um, I really like them because I really do enjoy using the tip for when I'm doing some detail work. And they just suit my hand and eye size. Very important. I've got close pairs of the Unite scissors. Um, the ones we have more expensive in the line. I'm just having those sharpened. But these ones are way more than adequate. I love the balance of these beautiful soft Japanese steel. Um, they're fantastic. Very competitively priced as well. So that's our scissor technique. You can either come in with a thumb underneath. And we go like that. But obviously, it's the same technique. The thumb is just doing all the work or it sits on top. Okay, practice that. It's going to be very, very important. That is going to guide us through all parts of the haircutting that we're doing. So we're looking at suitability for Deborah, and we're looking at maybe introducing maybe a sweeping fringe. She says, well, I haven't really thought about that. My face is too round. That's the classic one. My face is too fat. I've got fat cheeks. My face is too fat. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to pull the hair back just to see what Deborah looks like underneath it all. And we will go into this in more in depth in our art of a consultation on the second, as I remind you, right here. But it's very important. I can do this to a client and I can look in the mirror and I will say, look, where is the human eye drawn to? Because she might wear her hair back quite a bit. And subconsciously, you're probably looking up here straight away because the, the eye is drawn to the greatest area of skin as opposed to down here. Okay, it might get drawn to the eyes, but up here. So put that consultation value in. Let's instantly cover that up. I need to do it in my hand. I know it's more skin, but instantly we'd see a change in her face shape. There we go. Let's pull my arm up. So you can see that's better. You suddenly get more interest on her eyes and cheekbones and jawline. Okay, if I pull that away, voila, you suddenly feel that looks rounded. It's completely an optical illusion, okay, in comparison to that. You can't say her face looks rounded there. It's way more rounded through here with a higher forehead than the recession. So maybe a sweeping fringe does work 
really, really well for Debbie. And I will play around with that just to show her how it breaks the hair up and how I want it to sit when it comes down over those cheekbones. You know, it's a great little tip to do on people is to sit that hair cheekbone and then it comes back around the side. So I'm gonna show you how you create that shape as well on longer hair, very, very flattering. So that's a little bit on consultation, how we introduce that simple tip, pulling all the hair back and having a look. I'm gonna talk about um, distribution of weight a little bit more when we're looking at a bob, because that's something that always raises its ugly head when people think they want a graduated bob, but the hair's too thick, but I'm gonna not diverse too much. But let's talk, to, let's talk about Debbie. Okay, so for her, she's been shampooed. She's in the chair. She's had her seven seconds applied to her hair, obviously. I like to think we apply seven seconds of a little bit of the backwash, comb it through. So she comes back to the chair, combed through, or with her hair in a clip. I always used to say to my trainees, I always want to see you with at least two of these clips on you at all times. So when the client comes back, hair's all combed through and it's really presentable. No one wants to see long hair dripping all over the client, all over the face, or you've got a bird's nest to deal with. Time is so important to us as hairdressers that we don't want to spend 10 minutes on the chair combing it through before we've even got into cutting because we know 45 or an hour minute or an hour appointment, you're already breaking it down in your head. Oh, I spent 10 minutes getting the hair washed, combed through. I'm now down into 35 total for this. It's gonna take me 20 minutes to blow dry it, five minutes to maybe put an iron on. All I've got to do is haircut in 10 minutes. We know sometimes some technical haircuts can't be done that time. So working methodically and not slowly, but at a good pace can actually be faster as opposed to trying to rush it to understanding guidelines, etc. So we're working off Debbie's parting argument's sake. And I'm just gonna put one layer in the back just to work from, just to show you where I've working this from. So the hair would have been pulled out perpendicular to the head. Let me just see if I can move that. You see from here, the angle through here to true 90 degrees from head shape. And then blunt cut, because we know Debbie's ends are notorious becoming really fine and frayed. And we continue that through on the parietal ridge. And I'm overextending the hair back. So I'm leaving a little bit more weight in the front of the head. Why would I do that? Because I've already assessed how much hair is from behind the ear to the front of the head is way more minimal than is in the back. So balance wise, I probably wanna leave this slightly heavier in comparison to the back. Very common occurrence on people not to have that much hair on, on, you know, in front of the ear. Hair is traditionally finer as well, which is something you want to pay attention to when you do short hair really short, especially on men with blonde hair, etc. You don't want to maybe clipper it quite as close, purely because it will look finer in that front of the hair to recession, just in that part compared to the rest of the back of the head. So we're overextending the hair on Debbie, chatting away to her, see what her kids are doing, etc who's doing what, who's going to college this year, who's dropped out. So to balance that out on the other side for this mid-length haircut, we're doing exactly the same. I'm only gonna do one section here because we don't wanna go through the whole haircuts, but I'm, this hair is being dragged across and out to perpendicular from parietal ridge. Why have we done that? Because this creates balance then when it falls down, okay? From here, you're, what you're gonna see is that you have then got equal layers on this side of the head as you do on that side. If, for argument's sake, I'm gonna do one piece on the top here just to show you what I mean. I'm gonna get rid of her parting. Pull this hair up and blunt cut accordingly. 
Okay, her parting was here. Okay, I'm going to separate that in half. And let's just see where her layers end up as they go down the head. Okay, vastly different. There's my finish here, and there's my finish here. So sometimes you'd be asking yourself, why don't I see too many layers on the side of the hair that it's got the less hair where the parting is? That makes sense. Where there's more hair from here, it's got greater place to travel over the top of the head. So you've got shorter layers up through here, almost eye level. This one down below her chin. And yet when you pick it up, you say, I can't find it. I don't know where that is. There we go. Look through here. See that? So it's not, you haven't cut it wrong. You haven't cut it badly. But in terms of this haircut, balance wise, what you've done is that you've now created way more layers on this side and hardly any on here. So consequently, that lady is always going home and doing this to that side of her hair to create the same volume balance that you get on the other. So that's one of my 101 tips for you on that, especially dealing with mid length hair. Let's deal with maybe that hair in the front of the face through here that hangs down and doesn't frame the face so much. Now, most people with long hair always like to tuck the hair behind the ear. Subconsciously, they're always doing that just to force it away from the face. And as you can see through here on Debbie, creates great movement and shape from the cheekbone. How do we define that? So once again, I come off parietal ridge because this would be where her sweeping fringe would come from. And through this piece, and I'm gonna do it on some shorter hair as well. I'm gonna comb that down natural fall. Spin her around for you. And I'm gonna come in through here and I'm gonna work on cheekbone eye. I'm just going to run my scissors down just the perimeter of the hair through here. Not too much. I'll just do that a couple of times. Now, traditionally, you'd be thinking, oh, wow, I'm no client is going to go for that and cut all that hair off. But ask yourself this question. How many clients do you do where this hair, hair through here never reaches your forward graduation down here. Chemical haircuts, people, we get a lot of breakages through here. So what you're doing, you are addressing that. But what that does is this shorter hair through here, short hair pushes hair, okay? It creates movement. Short hair will then push the longer hair at the front back off the face. Consequently, the hair that comes over the top will then sit over the top of it, but the hair underneath will sit away just in touch. So you're instead creating a nice little S-bend shape in the hair. And you're gonna see this a little bit more in detail when I do it on a shorter haircut. So that's my little tip for you there on dealing with hair that has a tendency to fall in front of the face, because no matter how much forward graduation you do, you're not always gonna be able to get that, especially on longer hair, you won't be able to do forward grad all the way up to the nose to get that hair to, to be pushed away. Okay, because short hair supports long. So creating a little bit of shortness in through here, as a little bit of detail, just helps me to push that hair away from the face and the combination of layers, etc. the hair instantly stays away from her on that side, as opposed to this side where it's dropping in. So that's my mid length, a couple of little assessments for you. Remember that one, working off parietal ridge for balance. I think it's very, very relevant for today, unless you are doing a center pair with a center parting, going back to our consultation again, where does she wear her hair? Where predominantly is she gonna wear her hair? If you do it here, no problem. But if she wears it left or right of the head, that's where you have to take into account where you're gonna be layering it through parietal ridge to create perfect balance. So Debbie's gonna disappear. And I'm gonna bring on her twin sister. I can get her to convince to leave the chair. I might need both hands. She enjoys being in the chair so much. Any more questions yet, Mike? Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Everyone's just waking up, having the coffee, or I'm putting them to sleep. Let's just tighten this one up. There we go. 
So I've got a little bit more of a technical haircut through here and I've left one side deliberately different to the other. So common little problems when we're looking at haircuts, suitability, et cetera. And as you can see through here, I've got one with a little bit of thickness on. It's encroaching on the face. The fringe is a slightly different shape. And the other one, much more flattering through here with a fringe, opening up cheekbone down to the jawline. So how do we create that? What am I going to do to create that? Well, obviously we've cut the fringe square on the other side. So we wanna refine that fringe. Where do we find how it, where it's gonna finish on through here? So how do we find that? Well, it's very, very simple. Your sections for that fringe, I put my comb on the top and I look at point through here. So where that is, come on the other side for you. Just use my scissors. If I can get out of the way, that's better. The white screen. So just there, that high point of where the skull curves over, that is where the hair is going to fall forward. Beyond that point, the hair will then start falling down to the sides. So that's very important to understand that. Argument's sake, you may have hair that has a high recession underneath. So I might not want to do the triangular section through here. I might actually want to follow that recession underneath in my section pattern. So that's a good little tip for you. So we find out where that naturally finishes. And then from there, we come in and re re refine that fringe. just using the points of the scissors. I'm not coming in, I'm not trying to take a great big chunk. I come in, I'm just using the tip. Use your fingers to balance. And just refine that away. So to open up that cheekbone, just like we did on the other side, once we've got our fringe in perfect unison, like the other side, And this is a common occurrence when you're trying to cut a square fringe is that you'll naturally, if you just pull your fringe out with your fingers, what happens because your face shape is rounded through this side. If you pull out a straight line, I'm gonna pull it there to explain this. So the face shape here is rounded, okay? You pull the fringe out in a straight line. It's not gonna be the same length here as it is on that point through here. So consequently, that what happens is, is you end up creating a concave. For a concave fringe, that's perfect. So if you wanna create like these modern, sort of what you call curtain bangs, just elevating your fringe straight out from the head and cutting a straight line, you will then find your fringe will fall perfectly in a concave section. So that's what I've done on this deliberately. So I have to square that off. By squaring that off, it's going to open up the face shape. Okay, we have more balance there now. And I would keep coming in and refining that just with the tips of my scissors. Just like we did on the longer hair, we now come in and we're going to chisel that away from the cheekbone area to open up you can see through here, you'll see this a lot on haircuts, especially with bobs. You're always looking at and thinking, why have I got such a heavy line through here? So I come in and I use the apex of my blade through here. I introduce that to the hair and literally just was done before using that thumb, tiny little movements, just working that down the perimeter of that hair. And I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna carry on doing that. You're not looking at taking away huge swathes of hair with this, just small amounts. And what you're gonna find is that hair is then, once as I've said before, it pushes 
longer here and it starts to sit in and then we start to see miraculously that face shape opening up. Yeah, somebody curious about your career path, Barry, where did you start first doing hair? In my mum's kitchen is where I first started. Who was the question from? Is there a name? Daniel C. Daniel. Um, yeah, absolutely. Great question. Yeah, I was in my mum's kitchen. Then I used to pinch her scissors. I used to run up in the bathroom and cut my own hair. So that was when I was like 14, 15. I'm conscious of that's when I was doing that. So maybe the writing was on the wall when I started doing hair. From there, I got myself an apprenticeship in London. And it just by chance, it was for um, the Queen's. It was, it was actually under license to Her Majesty the Queen. So it was called the Queen's Hair Salon. It's a salon called Neville Daniel. Neville's is still there, um, still going strong. And that's where I did my apprenticeship. And then, then, you know, fast forward 600 years and I've ended up in Unite in California. So here we see like that has just opened up that face shape. So a little tip for you there, when you're dealing with a lot of hair and you want to see a little bit more of a more shape to it, suitability, look at that. It brings up all those eyes. So they become the focus. We've cut down on the skin because we put the fringe in there. Doesn't matter, this is a short bob. Same principle applies even on longer hair, instigating a fringe, that little trick of pulling all the hair back, using your hand to cover up. Argument's sake, they might not want a blunt fringe. Well, fine. Use your hands in here and come in like this. Okay, create those Vs. I'll take my comb out of the way. Create those Vs through here. See what that does. Okay, when you're, do, when you're looking at it, say, all right, I can give you a fringe. It's going to sweep. We can do curtain front bangs, like little peekaboos, et cetera. Just little things like that. You can win someone over. You can always make one as well. But we'll go into that. If I want to use, I'm going to do a little separate class on here about using hair pieces, et cetera, for, uh, for clients and how you can um, change their minds with haircuts and hairstyles, et cetera. So that's my little opening the face through here on the bob. Now, classic ones for this, someone comes in and they'll be saying, oh, you know, I want that graduated look on the bob, et cetera. Um, I want it to have, you know, much more of a rounded shape. We call it stacked over here. I like what graduation. For argument's sake, the actual hair is very, very thick. Would I graduate that thick hair? No, because I'm building up weight. So if the hair's really thick already, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a huge mushroom shape in that head. I'm going to determine, especially in the back, if I really pull that hair flat out of the way, what is that parietal shape and also the occipital bone, what is the shape of that head? How pronounced is that occipital area into the nape of the neck? So to create a beautiful rounded shape, we just do rounded graduation on the haircut. Very, very simple. Rounded graduation. That corner that we see through here, I take that off. Once again, I'm working precision and blunt cutting. Follow that corner. I'm gonna do that section once more. Working precisely, removing that hair that I don't want to cut. See if you can see that adequately. So that corner comes from, spin them around, where that hair is perpendicular to 90 on the head, just below the crown, as you can see through here. Let's move out of the way, let's give you a better idea. That's where my corner is. And what that does, it makes the hair sit in on the head shape, creates the illusion that you've graduated it, but you've given that rounded graduation. So it sits in really, really nicely. And you can see in comparison through here, I just pull this out. It's much shorter than the hair next to it, corresponding through here, okay. Difference lengthwise. Let me just see if I'll give you a better view of that. There we go. See, my fingers are finishing. 
So it's not a huge amount, but that corner becomes very, very important. So I can continue doing that all the way through. Once again, once we get to in front of here, I might overextend that back just to create balance on both sides. So that is one way of eradicating a large mushroom shape. So it sits into the head beautifully. And as you can see in comparison to the other side as well, and I'm just gonna pull that through here, how you can see that sits this side tighter to the head. So I've already done it on this side and that has much more of a rounded shape. But let's go into this and say, okay, maybe we don't wanna do rounded graduation. We wanna do some texturizing on it. The hair's you know, very, very thick and it's quite weighty. I wanted to show you that rounded graduation because I want to show you that just from doing some precision cutting, you can eradicate that from having to do so much point cutting. Point cutting is used so much now just to texture hair, but to also remove weight. So, but if you're removing weight, you've got to think how you're doing it, why you're doing it. Remember that, what, why, and how? So what am I going to do? I'm going to remove some weight. How am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to do it in combination of point cutting or slice cutting. And why am I doing it? I'm doing it so I want to compress the hair into the side of the face, but also to create some texture. So maybe the combination of rounded graduation and texturizing would be ideal. But argument's sake, we are going to do texturizing through here. So as opposed to just pulling my scissors up, point cutting it, what I'm looking for here, I've taken a forward graduation, forward, sorry, forward diagonal section, and then I'm gonna point cut that in exactly the same way. So I'm gonna put more from the back of the head closer to the front, deeper, but coming in 90 to that section. Remember that, 90. But also look how much hair I can get to with those scissors. I've got enough hair in my fingers. I'm not trying to point cut it up here. What I'm not doing, I'm not texturizing. If I point cut hair through here, I'm not putting any texture into that whatsoever. I'm just putting in a chipped finish on the ends of the hair. So I've got to have enough depth in the hair to influence it. Repeat that on the section above. So why am I coming in from the back to the front? Well, because that will then influence how the hair is gonna be pushed, okay? So I'm getting the hair to be pushed from the back to the front. I could reverse it on the next section above. So I then create an S-bend texturizing motion that would then help me maybe if this hair was longer and I wanted to introduce an iron to create S-bends in the hair for a much more of a beach wave of look. So there's some thought process then into my haircut, how that is then going to influence my hair styling further down. Okay, there's a, there's a good thought process going on there. So that what, why, and how, always, re, always asking yourself, that and continue through here and as you can see through here i'm going to what i call fan the hair open through that okay so just like on our little teaser video we were seeing someone doing this our boy todd was doing it probably by having that in my fingers plenty of hair there in the length all i have to do then is just move that top finger accordingly and it fans the hair open for me allows me to get my shears really nice and deep into there. If I want to come in slightly deeper, I ride my scissors over the top and just influence that hair deeper down the hair shaft, as opposed to coming in from the top. That is going to create a softer outer line to that layer. Let's take out more mid length. I just come in over the top and remove weight that way. Instantly starting to see difference in that. So, Great right technique for removing weight, but once again, understanding what you're doing, vitally important. We come to the top section. This is a nice little one for you as well. Where I've done that um, rounded grad behind it, I do have a blunt cut piece through here as a guideline. Who's to say I can't do precision here and then come into texture moving, moving further forward because you could have different hair types on the head that may require that. So I come back in to blend that in, fan the hair slightly, and then texturize that blunt cut we did. 
but through here, I'm going to come in, I'm going to be way more aggressive through here. And you can see through here that texturizing I've created there, real nice pieces of deep texture through here, great spacing. That is going to give me something very, very different on the top. And then we get a much more of a shattered feel through here. Very, very nice. And let's really accentuate maybe this piece coming onto the face. Now for that, a lot of times I see people, all they will do is they'll just keep point cutting, point cutting, point cutting on the side on a full graduation section, which is fine. But all you're doing then is thinning the hair. You're not creating necessarily an area of detail. So how do we accentuate that? Well, we have to come below that section. Once again, it's all about exactly the same as we did on the side, about how it influences that shape, shorter hair pushing the long. So we come from the underneath and we chisel out that accordingly. And what that does, when you get some product on there, voila, like a little bit of conundrum, etc. You instantly then have an accentuated piece on the face. So that is very, very different from point cutting the sides of the hair to create soft layers. You would have to work so hard to accentuate those further down the line when you want to pull them out. So this works anywhere on the head. Argument's sake, you've got long hair and you just want a piece just to come in, influence where cheekbones are or jawline. Two areas that are always a must, I feel, on women's hair to accentuate the haircut. And as you can see through here, the difference in the other side where it's dead straight to the other, this side, it's much softer, it's much more feminine. It's what I call, you know, much more of like a French gamine feel to it, um, but something very, very simple. It's that what, why, and how, you know, what I was gonna do, why I was doing it and how I was gonna do it, etc., was all there. And you can see through this, I've put no product in there yet. We've mentioned using something like Conundrum or Texturizer Spray. The haircut has done so much of the work for me. So we've created a beautiful roundness to that graduation. Once again, the haircut does that. I know from then I can put in a bit of texturizer, etc. That is going to accentuate that shape beautifully. You know, pushing it up through here where it's all being supported by the hair underneath. And I've got that great texture on the front. So we've come from precision into texture here, but it all ends seamlessly and blends in as one. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Any more questions coming through yet? Yeah. Okay, off she goes. That was Debbie's twin sister. She's off. I've got a nice little pixie cut to round it all out. So we've gone sort of mid-length long. We've gone technical haircuts. Oh, there's a little bit actually. I'm, please forgive me. This is live. This shows it's live. I miss nearly one of the best bits because something's overlooked. So. She's had, a, I've had to bring her back. I wanted to show you something on a baseline. Okay. I'm gonna pull her up if I can a little bit more. There we go. So we've seen the beginning of a shape through here. I'll just pull this down a little bit. So on some bobs, you might wanna have from the back, you may wanna have this concave line where it comes into a point in the back. How do we achieve that? This can freak people out because they're always thinking, I can't balance it out one side and the other. I cut a nice V on the right. When I come to the left, I get it all wrong. Or if I come from the left, I go to the right. It's quite simple. For me, being right-handed, and it's going to come across different than your screen, <clears throat> excuse me, I would start in the bottom. And from here, What I do after I've instigated the haircut, my shape, I start elevating my elbow. So I'm gonna get Mike to pan out at this point, wonderful. And what I do when I start my point through here, all I do is start elevating my elbow more and more and more as I work through to the front. Now I see my elbow elevates. And what that's going to do, it's going to end up making my scissors point down. 
and then I start creating a much more balanced concave shape. So it's very, very simple. By starting from here, you can see from here my the line of my arm scissors always one. I start from my point, and all I do is elevate that elbow as I travel, and that creates the curved line. Very, very to us to do that on the other side. I'll take that from the point. Same principle starts down here at the same angle. I just elevate through to the point in the back. And before you know it, you've got perfectly seamless V shape, concave shape in the back of the head. That was my little tip for you on that one. So just remembering to elevate elbow when you're cutting creates your curvatures on your perimeter lines. Hope someone found that useful. Now I can come back to the pixie maker. Not doing too bad for time today. I wanted to definitely go over a little bit of scissor over comb. Scissor over comb, argument sakes come through. You can have problematic hairlines, etc. But just needs some good technical approach to it. So I'd like to sit down when I'm doing this, and I want to do that for you today. Not going to see the stool I'm sitting on, but there's going to be a reason before that. Okay, this is too high. Okay, this is too. I'm going to be working my shut. My arms are going above my shoulder line. Let me get into a, a good position. I need to come down a lot more, but about here, see that perfectly. Great position to talk to a client. So this is my client is a really great spin-off. When I'm talking to clients, she's in the chair, we're both looking in the mirror, and it's much less threatening with me if I'm consult, I'm doing a consultation, I'm doing the haircut, that I'm not imposing myself and sitting above the client, reaching over them because it can freak some people out. They will never say it. But some people just would feel uncomfortable, especially when they have men cutting hair as well. I like to get down to eye level straight away when I'm talking to them. And I will delve into this when we do the consultation because it's vitally important. But I like this part of it purely because it allows me to then work at a nice, comfortable position. So we can zoom back into the head now. So just moving the head forward a touch. There we go, getting the correct angle. How do we instigate scissor over comb? So I like to have my comb working in a nice rhythm, and then I will bring my scissors in to join up with that. Have we got any more questions yet, Mike? Are we doing okay? Uh, yeah. Okay. About 10 minutes left. So to instigate a little bit of scissor over comb, I come in, the comb is angled away from the head. I don't come in and do flat. Flat will help me if I want to take bulk away. Even then, I'm still airing the side of caution and pulling the comb out of the head. The more I angle the comb away, the more graduation I'm going to get. And we're looking at a buildup of weight. This is probably like the shortest version of graduation that we can have. Let's put a nice shape there in the back. I'm going to graduate this all up. Through here, thank you. I'm going to do one side clean. Maybe we'll leave that little tiny corner piece through here. I quite like that. Mike's found that for me with his adept camera work. So we can incorporate that into the haircut. Maybe a little bit of disconnection. Nothing wrong with that. So once again, as you can see through here, my thumb is just resting on that scissor. Okay, when I put my thumb inside, it's got to work quite hard. Okay, and it's quite um, what I feel uh, staccato. It's like chop, 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 but it feels like a little bit. This is my preference. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Keeping it real for the people. I leave my thumb on the scissor, and that way it moves very, very quickly. You can see there through here. One blade's moving, the other one is stationary. I mean, comb stays away. I'm using the wider part of my comb at this moment in time. I'm gonna work over to that disconnected piece. Just accentuate that. 
question here as we do this. Yeah. Uh, when doing scissor over code, do you always start with the wide side of the code? Preference wise, yes, because I'm not detailing the hair, I'm removing weight, but also to instigate that part of the scissor over comb, it's much easier using the wide. I like to come in with a wider tooth part of my comb. When I come in to detail it, because this is, this is gonna be shorter, it's finer down here, I can then come in and maybe detail the bottom. But I would find then when you go up the head, be consistent. It's more about the depth and the angle that you're pulling that comb away. And as you can see, what I call it is going up the wall. Okay, and what I'm going to do for you here as well, I want to give you a classic scenario. This could work on men's hair, etc. So let's, argument's sake, let's put a weight line in this. Let's make that a little bit more pronounced. There we go. We've got, we've got a nice chunky weight line in through here now. And I'm going to show you how you get rid of that. So we work my scissor over comb up to that. So the weight line comes from the hair above. It doesn't come from that point through here. So what we do to eradicate that, we come out from the head and we just keep lifting and we just keep going up that imaginary wall, up and out. Okay, so it's that motion where we come in and we come out. Come in, you come out. Pull the hair down, pull your shear through. Lift and elevate. Assess what you're doing. And then we go again. Close shear, shear goes in, lifts the hair up, pulls the comb in. Up the wall. Once again, we just continue that up the head as we go. And then we get a seamless blend all the way through. So scissor over comb doesn't have to be ultra short, but my fingers can't grab that hair, so I can't do a short haircut. Linda, who works next to me in the salon, might have tiny fingers, and she can do a short haircut with her fingers, but I wouldn't have that luxury. So I can come in, I will then refine it, or if I need to go slightly shorter in the nape of the neck, come in. And we'll work your scissor over combing across both ways, there's hair growth, etc. And you're just refining it, then you're literally just coming over the ends of the hair and almost just like kissing the outside of the hair with your scissors. And then you get beautiful blends in the hair. And as you say, you don't have to take it all clean. We can have a little bit of disconnection through here. And let's do a little bit of leaving that long and then scissor over combing above it. Oh, let's get technical on that one. So we're then blending shorter into long. So it's the reverse of going up the head. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start my section a couple of inches above it to blend it into the hair that's shorter through here. And then I'm going to help to press that hair down, come down just a little bit before, maybe just elevate that more. And that takes away some of the hair that is in below it. So then we get a perfect little blend into the longer pieces on the bottom. Does that make sense? So I'm just going to go through that again. I instigate my guide quite a bit above it. I come back down to the hair below it, elevate as well. The more I elevate that, the more your safety you're playing with. You're not going to take the hair away that you want to leave through here. You're just going to make it finer. And that's very relevant when we come into doing the sides of the hair. If I'm working argument's sake and I've got some long hair through here and I've got it feathered, and I want to retain that. I've got shorter hair above it. Same principle. I instigate the hair above it. Elevate that a lot more. It's almost like over, over direction. Takes away the hair above, but leaves me with a nice fine feather on the perimeter of that haircut. So where we have, we've gone through multiple different facets of cutting um, today. We've gone through the joys of blunt cutting, how precise that will be. We want to sort of remember that one. The blunt cut, your scissors are only moving with your thumb coming through. Tension stays 
constant from tip of the finger to mid knuckle. Very important. Don't, you don't always have to go all the way down the hand because your tension value will change when you hit that part of your hand. It doesn't grip the hair as well as it does from your second knuckle in to the fingertip. Does that make sense? Then we've done, we've tapped on, um, tipped on point cutting, differentiation between that as opposed to just chipping on the ends of the hair to actually making sure you influence it and you have enough hair then to come down into the hair shaft. Another little one for you as well. I'll quickly touch that on another head of hair. There is so much in hair cutting that we can never cover it in an hour. Point cutting I see a lot on base lines. And in actual haircuts as well. Argument's sake, you like to come in from one side to point cut. You like to come in from this side. Okay, what's going to happen is if you carry on doing that on the other side, your haircuts are always going to push from the shorter side to the long. Okay, so your haircuts are going to move in that direction. So what you have to just to do is quite simple. Balance it out on the other side. Just make sure you come in and you change this angle of your scissor and come in this way. To change it easily, I think if you just be try and work on becoming consistent of elevating the hair enough is then you can come right over the top and get your scissors to come in 90 perfectly with that hair and you will point cut way more efficiently than change your influence. And it's exactly the same as when you're doing base lights. Argument's sake, if you're working from one side to the other and your scissors come in at that angle from the middle of the head, make sure you switch them over and you take them out to that side. Otherwise your baseline will then flick all the way around to one side if you carry on point cutting at that angle all the way through. So hopefully you've enjoyed that today. I've thoroughly always enjoyed doing topics like this. There is always so much to do. Um, remember, we've got the Art of Consultation, August the 2nd. I thoroughly recommend that. I'm really going to give you some tips to help you get out, maybe get out of that stagnation period in your career if you feel like your client's not having anything different. You can sign up in advance on unitehair.com, Unitehair TV. Um, add that to your calendar. Um, we can do these ones are recorded and they can be found on Unite TV under live uh, replay. Um, questions about live or Unite TV, please email unite tv at unitehair.com and you will find us on Instagram at unite underscore hair TV. Much appreciated for watching this again, or if you watch this as a recording, there is so much more content like this that we are doing weekly and updating uh, all that regularly on a basis. I want to give my thanks to all my team behind the camera that you will never see. And that always deserve a big mention, putting up with me and my idiosyncrasies, et cetera, and the chaos that I give them on a daily basis. So we will see you again next time, August the 2nd. Thank you so much. <laughs>